Good afternoon, guys. I'm over here in Queen Creek, Arizona again. We're going we're gonna to try to do something a little bit different. I'm just going to show you this 2014 Phaeton. I am an unapologetic tip and fanboy, and uh, I've already done the inspection on this one. Uh, but I just want to show you the things that I like about it and why I think Tiffin is a good product. But I think I found a pretty good example of a really nice used Tiffin product and a uh, reason why I like Tiffin so much. I think almost peak Tiffin as far as the age and what you're getting with it. And it doesn't have too much stuff that I as a technician don't really like. So I think it even looks good. And this is 2022 and this is a 2014. So this is about eight years old, and I would not think this is uh, eight years old. It looks like it's maybe two or three years old to me. And don't worry, we will get on the roof and take a look at the roof. But what we'll do this time is just start on the outside. I'll try to point out anything that I think is pretty interesting. Now, as silly as it might sound, I think my favorite thing that I want to point out is right here. You'll notice these are all rocker switches. There's no LCD touch panel right here. No push button for the network communication all physical switches that control everything look at that just like it's supposed to be i'm not saying the uh network systems the spider boxes the fireflies aren't cool i am not saying that controlling your rv with your phone isn't cool i'm just saying that it seems like it's a guaranteed obsolescence issue but rocker switches will be very easy to troubleshoot and repair and replace down the road compared to complicated electronics let me just say that and personally find it a lot easier to fit a switch in the middle of the night and not look at an LCD screen or some weird push button. Now I'll go ahead and give you a quick sneak peek right here. Again, this is a 2014. This is eight years old. It does not look eight years old even a little bit. But let's go back outside again. Now this still has the exterior that you're going to find on a brand new uh, tip in anyways between the screen door and the entry door. They still power lock and unlock. But even like these Tiffin windows, they're not com really frameless windows, obviously, because you can see a frame, but they did paint the frame, the body color, and uh, they have a lot of protection on the end of the glass, unlike the frameless windows that you'll see on more modern RVs. Of course, the paint's in fantastic condition, and it really is a gorgeous color scheme they put on it. Aged very well. Now, while I would like to see uh, Aquahod in a diesel pusher of this quality, they do put, give you two furnaces, one up there and then one down below. So that is two zone heating on it, along with the roof ACs are going to be heat pumps. Of course, you'll have the outside TV. Tiffin was one of the first manufacturers to actually develop this outside TV door. And rather than trying to put a TV in the basement right there, and I've always liked this feature. It is still very difficult to watch TV, though, outside. We'll also agree that the glare in the middle of the day, even in the shade, is, makes it very difficult to watch TV. But that's what nights are for. Tiffin has very solid aluminum doors that are finished on the inside, too, with durable metal, so it doesn't tear so easily or get damaged. Some are made out of plastic or even fiberglass and some aren't even finished which is pretty crazy because a phaeton still is not a luxury level diesel pusher and i'm talking about luxury diesel pushers that don't have a finished compartment door because we have to have four slide outs now you're gonna have to have some way of getting your stuff without hitting your head on the slide out since we have the ladder extension let's go ahead and get on the roof of course, when I say Tiffin does, does this one, almost did everything right in 2014, but it's also going to include the ladder because a lot of new modern RVs don't give you an inspection ladder anymore. And it's pretty important for the maintenance on the RV, but also it's a good accessory if you live in an RV to have that ladder. But Tiffin also has been doing a one-piece fiberglass gel coat roof for quite some time. So it's a true gel coat roof. It's not just a sheet material. And uh, we'll take a look at it pretty quickly. Uh, we'll notice, obviously, the paint's peeling on the radius, which is not an uncommon issue. The slide out topper is close to the end of its life. This is a original uh, woven acrylic. We do know about that. But the rear cap, I've already inspected this. It's not loose. This roof AC, I've already inspected that. It's not loose. It already has a Weingard Traveler on it for DirecTV. And if we look over on the side right here, yeah, this fabric's kind of at the end of its life, too. It's not uncommon, about eight years old. 
Now another thing that Tiffin does that not all manufacturers do, they incorporate a grip or a traction uh, texture to two aisles on the roof itself. So there's texture right here and texture on this side. So you can walk on the roof a little bit better without having to worry about slipping so much. But of course, do be very, very careful up here. Of course, you can also see the previous owner already went ahead and added the Max Bear vent covers on here. So that's one less thing you have to do. And the three fantastic vents that are actually in here. The skylight's a little bit different than the rest of the industry, so it's not as prone to cracking, but we'll, we'll inspect to make sure it's not cracked. And of course, Tiffin is still using the self-leveling silicone. You don't use Dicor on this roof because it won't stick to this sealant right here. But all that sealant looks really good too. You know, this roof AC, I've already checked, but we'll check it again. It's not loose. Uh, again, a more clear coat is peeling here. And this slide out topper looks a little bit better, but a little bit worn in the middle. And I'm not looking too bad up here. We have the one more AC. It's not loose. Front cap, we have our Sirius XM radio and CB pre-wire. Front cap's not loose. Even this uh, paint's not in bad condition up here. It's just a little dirty. We got a, a late winter rainstorm here recently, but this one does have the one piece windshield on it. But we'll keep walking in here. Like I said, this is a durable one piece fiberglass gel coat roof material. We should wash and wax this at least once a year. I know I say it quite a bit. And if we look at this slide out topper over here, yeah, it's a little bit stretched out and probably towards the end of its life too. But it's still working, it's still serviceable. Nothing too bad looking. And we'll just follow up right here. It looks like the original Weingard dome satellite dish was right about here. They've had that removed when they put that satellite dish on. Looks like everything was sealed up properly. Sealant they were supposed to use, that's self-leveling silicone. I'm assuming that's just covering the wires that would have been there. And this is the TV antenna that Tiffin uses. And I like this TV antenna. I like it a lot. It always seems to work. Besides a little bit of paint peeling, this roof is in very good condition. You got three roof ACs that are actually heat pumps. And it's the new Mach 8 one with the separate outside blower motor and inside blower motor. So it's a lot quieter too and a lot more reliable than the previous iteration. So even though this roof is eight years old, it looks just as good as a modern roof is going to ever look. And besides some worn out slide out topper fabric and some chipped and some peeling clear coat, this roof looks really good. This is almost a, a modern roof just sitting right here already. Yeah, there's... So why do I like Tiffin products so much? It's because they're built really well from the beginning and they try to make everything last and be durable. I found them to age very well. That's a good storage right in there. A common question I'll get is, what is this little utility door doing way, way up there? It does seem odd, but as a technician, I'm really happy they do this. That's shower access for the plumbing. Uh, you don't have to tear apart an entire wall just to get access to the shower f fittings on the back side of the shower there. Another rare thing that you won't find on a lot of RVs, even in 2014, let alone a modern RV in 2022, is a gravity fill for your fresh water tank. That's actually more vital when you're boondocking than you think it would be. Now, although this is not the seamless fiberglass slide-out boxes that you'll see on a modern Tiffin, these are very durable slide-out bo boxes that were made in 2014. Look at that. It's even aluminum down there. The other, another thing that Tiffin does that I've always kind of enjoyed, besides having a battery disconnect right here for the chassis batteries, is this weird thing right here. We'll see that on the other side, but that's a battery maintainer for the chassis battery. Now, instead of having a complicated relay system and a smart charger on it, it just has a plug-in battery maintainer that plugs into a 110 outlet right there. So whenever you're plugged into 110 or running the generator, this will see the battery, this will see power and start charging and maintaining the chassis battery. No complicated electronics, and that's easy to change out should that go bad. Kind of mind numbing how complicated some of these manufacturers make, man, have made maintaining the chassis batteries. And Tiffin thought of this, geez, I think it was in 2006. So, very, very simple. Keep it simple. And I didn't even point out that it has window awnings, which is absolutely vital, I think, on an RV. 
and I prefer the manual window awnings when it comes to uh, window awnings. The power ones just are always a little bit more prone to failure and these are very easy to, to deploy and put away. So having window awnings is really important if it's uh, hot because you can cast more shade and you can open up windows if it's raining. But it's important to be able to open up windows and get ventilation when it's raining because when you come in when you're wet you will create a lot of moisture in the air and it can get quite stuffy in an RV once you come in from the rain if you can't get some ventilation. So you got the max vent covers up there and window awnings over here. So you should be able to ventilate really easily. Now another thing on the outside that I appreciate as a service technician is this guy right there. Not everybody gives you that. That's actually an air filter access door. For the engine air filter, it's right here. So to get access to all the connections that you need to get to, you don't have to be on your back getting dirty. You can take this cover off, get access to all of that really easily to drop and service that engine air filter. And of course, even though it didn't have an aqua hot on it, it does have a tankless water heater, which this has actually worked out pretty well and require a lot less maintenance than the aqua hot likely to. What they also gave you is gonna be a shore cord reel, which is a lot more useful on 50 amp than you think it would be. And it still even has the surge protector built into the transfer switch. So that's how thoroughly modern this coach is. And the dreaded deft is gonna force right there. I don't know if you guys can see right here. The compartment lights still have the selector right there. So you have a motion detector where you can have it on all the time. They're still doing that on their newer RVs. I'm also a pretty big fan of things that are kept simple. And Tiffin's water bay has not changed much in about 15 years. I still like that they add the swivel feature on the sewer. So you can hook up there or you can rotate it this way for dumping your tanks. And I do appreciate that they use three inch valves on both the gray and black tank. Some manufacturers still use an inch and a half on gray, which seems ridiculous to me. Uh, the power hose reel that they use has always been reliable. And again, Tiffin's given the a whole house water filter uh, the fresh water tank drain is an oversized one so it should drain pretty fast and don't worry guys this does not have the rotten tank floor like they would have had in their 2006 2007 models so they already changed out that issue too so you don't have to worry about that now i'm going to show you guys something that maybe could get you in some trouble but tiffin's been mounting their Inverters right on the ceiling right here in the compartment for a very long time. But that's not the part that I care about. The inverter is the heart of your RV. That means if it goes bad, you kind of don't have an RV anymore. But what Tiffin did, they made this quick connect right here. So if your inverter doesn't pass power through anymore, you could actually unplug those two right there and you can plug the other ends into each other and bypass the inverter so you still have 110 power. That's a nice feature that really you only find on uh, bus conversions, I feel like. Having a built-in, having a built-in bypass on the inverter like that. I won't show you how to do that, but it's a nice feature as a technician to be able to diagnose an inverter that easily. And I'm not hating on a modern Tiffin completely, but their uh, fuse situation on their mat on their, but the fuses that they're using on their house system now are like little weird cube fuses that I've been having more and more problems with lately. And they still have the old bus style. Didn't point it out, but they still do give you diesel fuel on either side. And I can't deny that I like something simple, just like this one handy at the pole and manually pull out this generator slide. There's no bad, there's no motor that's gonna go bad, no hydraulic cylinder that's gonna go bad. And so it's always just gonna work. And it gives great service access to the generator, which again, is something I really appreciate. Is, uh, trying to service these things when everything is in the way. I've even seen manufacturers. I won't name names, but I will name names like Win Winnebago. Have a big plate all the way right here, so you can't even get this door off very easily. It's also nice because it's very easy to close still. But those were the exterior things that I thought were interesting to at least share with you guys. Uh, we'll go inside, take a look inside, but we'll go. But we'll go ahead and go inside real fast, take a quick look around. I'll try to point out anything else that might be kind of interesting and aged well on this. Now, like I said, this is a 2014, but I really think it aged very, very well. It's almost classic in the sense that I don't think it'll ever go out of style. The seats are in really good condition. Even the bolstering and the embroidering has held up. So it's really nice to see when people are taking care of their RVs. Yeah, not a big deal. It has hydraulic four-point leveling on it which I find to be a lot more useful than air leveling personally. 
I know I have a problem with this knob now that I did a road trip with an, uh, a Tiffin, <laughs> but uh, on the dash, it's all pretty straightforward standard stuff. Now, while I would have preferred to see a smart wheel on this Phaeton, I will tell you a few things that I do like about it. I do like analog gauges. It has relatively low mileage at 43,000 miles. It also does not have the crazy infotainment center that a lot of these RVs are coming up with. It still has uh, three-way cameras, so side cameras and rear camera. But it has a dash radio that's a standard double-din dash radio. So you can replace this probably for the next 20 years not, and not having to worry about your radio going obsolete because that infotainment center uh, is no longer supported. I found this Kenwood radio when I did the cross-country trip to be a very good radio. It's also nice, it already has integrated USB charge points on it, which is pretty early on in 2014. And luckily, the only power shades on this one are going to be the driver and privacy visors up by here. And those are both working. All the rest of them are going to be normal manual shades, roller shades, which, of course, I appreciate. I mean, not too much, because I actually did have to change out the motor on that solar shade, and that was not fun. Different cabinetry is very nice cabinetry. It is solid wood, solid wood cabinet itself. I like this control center right in the front area where everything's supposed to be. Very simple, very easy to operate. The monitor panel, this is contactless uh, probes on here. So it actually reads pretty well. And the inverter control, even like the Tiffin gives you a cheat sheet on how to operate your inverter. I like it when things make sense. And this makes sense to me. Now there are four slide outs on this, two in the front, two in the rear. Besides the slide outs having carpeting, it is actually oversized ceramic tile throughout the entire RV, which is a nice feature. This sofa is a hide -a bed and it's not a jackknife hide -a bed It's a true hide -a bed and it has an air bladder on top. So it makes a very comfortable, actually a surprisingly comfortable bed for guests. Sometimes it's too comfortable. So don't air up the, uh, the mattress if you don't want people to stay too long. I don't know if you can see the decor lights inside. I think these have aged very well too, along with the balances. Even this wall paneling is a really nice, elegant wall paneling. Now this is a 2014, so we have TVs everywhere. We have the one outside, the one over the dash for driving down the road. Uh, your main TV is gonna be right here because that one's obviously gonna be uh, looking at the sofa. Uh, it is solid surface Corian. I mean, this is a thick Corian countertop. And even like right here, I like little Heidi things like this. Push that back in, and now you have a desk for that recliner. Of course, that recliner you can move wherever you'd like. Now, my own honest opinion is that Tiffin's ceilings have gotten a little bit have gotten a little bit uglier, but but I am a very big fan of this ceiling. It's simple, but at the same time, a very ornate. It might be my way of saying the industry's going a little bit too crazy with LED light strips everywhere. Uh, that's kind of dating everything. It does have the Tiffin countertop extension. It's been very durable. And it still has integrated drawers on it. While I might have still wanted a, a little bit nicer three burner stove top, I do like that you can still remove the stove covers really easily. This is still a feature that you'll find in a modern Tiffin. And even a modern Numar, you can do that. And believe it or not, you have a dishwasher down here. It's surprising how uncommon dishwashers are even to this day. Tiffin also does a really good job on the backsplash. This is going to be stone and glass tile incorporated into the Corian. And down here again, we'll see what I like, rocker switches. It's very easy to operate everything off rocker switches and to know if your water pump's on or not. You don't have to go to some LCD display panel and look carefully at the icon to change to see if the water pump's on or off. Another feature that Tiffin's used for a very long time is this fantastic vent control where you control the vent lid separately from the motor. I really like this feature more. A lot of the other manufacturers will have the fantastic vent control with a thermostat for auto and manual. And it kind of gets confusing if you don't know when the fan's supposed to be on or off. So it's nice to just have an on off switch to make it make sense. What's also really nice is that we have a residential refrigerator in here. Uh, I think any RV of this quality or this caliber should be a residential refrigerator from now on. RV refrigerators, I think, are only useful 
personally in a campers or trailers at this point uh, on a diesel motor home for sure you need to have a residential refrigerator as silly as it might sound having two thermostats right here these are analog thermostats these are much more reliable in my opinion and a lot more easier to use in the modern lcd uh, screens or smart screens it's very easy to know what mode you're in and what you're trying to do because it works just like a residential home thermostat would what's interesting on this is because you have the two thermostats without having zone control. I like the option to be able to cool the front because usually the front gets hot, but the bedroom sometimes can uh, be in the shade and they get cold. You might need to have the heat on in, in, in the bedroom. So with these analog thermostats, one for each AC or each zone, you can actually do that. With zone thermostats, you can only heat or you can only cool. It might look like it's a downgrade, but I think it's an upgrade. And again, obsolescence, these are going to be easy to replace down the road. Those LCD touchscreens, I don't know. Now, this is a 40-foot diesel pusher, so it's not a bath and a half. So there's just going to be one mid-coach bathroom. Uh, this is a neo-angle shower. It has a single-handle faucet, which I do appreciate. That is a lot better. And then this is a fiberglass surround. So that I also appreciate. Uh, again, I think I ran into this on my... Allegro, I would have preferred the, the shower controls to be maybe on a different wall so that if I did want to sit right here, I wouldn't have this shower head in my, or the shower handle in my back. But what Tiffin does, what no other manufacturer does, is give you this uh, built-in skylight cover. You guys can't feel it, but I can feel all sorts of heat right here. Once I close that off, there's no more heat coming in. And pretty surprising that uh, more manufacturers don't do that. I know normally we do a we step in the, in the shower, so let's go ahead and step in the shower. We probably have about an eight inch step up, but I'm six foot. I can step straight up into it. Uh, if I step straight out of it, I will hit my head. But other than that, a lot of headspace for me, especially if I were to open up the uh, skylight. <laughs> Close that back off again. But stepping down, not too bad. Decent. May not have pointed it out either, but I'm a big fan of these pocket door latches. Not all manufacturers use that. Some of them still use a uh, a home style with a little tiny uh, handle you have to pull out. Of course, that'll take us to the head, the water closet, whatever you'd like to call it. This is a ceramic toilet. It is a residential style. It's got the one pedal. I think uh, a manual toilet's probably the best toilet you can go with. Electric toilets can be problematic. Again, in here you can see a rocker switch, very simple to operate all the lights very easily. The fantastic vent controls are identical and the GFCI outlets are not hidden. And I didn't point it out in the basement, but there is a central vacuum cleaner on this model. And as we go back into the bedroom, there's two more slides in the bedroom. I'm definitely jealous that there is a king size bed in this coach. This headboard is beautiful headboard. I mean, that's nice soft trim. A lot of times you'll have a window above the bed, which is somewhat problematic. And even though even these window valances are solid wood, that's just going to be for the ceiling fan, which again, it's a little surprising on how many new modern RVs the ceiling fan is causing a problem. That is to say, when the slide outs come in, they hit the ceiling fan. It seems like a very obvious thing to plan for, but Surprising how often I've seen it on more modern RVs. What you can see on the floor, it is the tile throughout all the way to the back where the engine cover, maybe it does have carpet on it. And the ceiling is just padded vinyl. Two great big huge mirrored sliding closet doors. The previous owner kind of went crazy with Reflectix. Or not too strange when you consider that this is an Arizona coach. But I do like how Tiffin integrated these doors. Earlier models, they had a strange bifold door right here that was right next to the slide out that did not latch well, did not open well, and got in the way of everything. So I like that they've improved their product to give access to the washer and dryer a lot easier here. The only thing you have to remember is to slide it, don't pull it. And then back in here, moved all the electronics and the entertainment center into the bedroom. Another nice thing that Tiffin did is on the home entertainment electronics is they kind of made it a little bit more future proof by having an hdmi splitter for their two inputs either from the dvd player or the satellite so you have an hdmi to each tv from here hdmi is probably going to be around for an, at least another 10 years so that's a nice feature to have that built in you don't have to worry about component cables uh, it is more likely that we're all just going to be streaming from our phones anyways as a 
as a screen mirroring device. So it's less important down the road, but it's also nice that you don't have to use uh, a network uh, LCD Firefly input selector to operate your TVs. Even the entertainment center is not gonna be obsolete down the road. And you'll see I have one more thermostat for the bedroom. But I just wanted to show you this 2014 Tiffin Phaeton that uh, I think is a pretty solid example of Tiffin, I think at the height of their design. This looks thoroughly modern. It's not gonna go obsolete. It's very upgradable down the road and it's in con wonderful condition. I really do appreciate less complicated systems, not just as a mechanic or a technician, but also as an RV owner myself. It's really nice to just find a rocker switch, turn the rocker switch on and off. I'm not a big fan of the whole uh, push button networking, uh, touch screen uh, wave that's been sweeping the RV industry. Uh, it's nice just to be able to hit a switch. So I think this is a wonderful RV. Beautiful and very usable, and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. But at any rate, one of the most common questions I'll get is, what's a good RV to buy? This is a good RV to buy. It's built really well. It has all the features you're gonna want on it. And uh, I know I'm a Tiffin fan, but it's a nice coach. And I think if you were to ask me if I would run a 2014 or a 2022 Phaeton, I would probably take this 14 over that 22. That's not to say that a new Phaeton is not worth buying. I'm just saying that this is a really nice RV. That's why I wanted to share it with you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I gotta get back to work. Yeah, uh, veranda I need to work on. And uh, hope that helps somebody. I'll try to fit and I'll try to point out and I'll try to point out everything else that I think more a little bit too haven't have, I I really like the simple but I really am a fig but I'm but this <clears throat> the sink's going to be out in the bathroom the sink's going to be out by itself which might be my which of which of course might be what which of course appeals to me cuz uh, I don't really like fixing electric toilets Though it may not seem important, they did duck the kit they did duck the closet with AC so your clothes don't get crazy hot.